Now that Central Wi-Fi Manager is installed correctly, it is now time to configure your managed wireless network. To do this, click on Configuration. You can now create a location for the access point. To simplify management, the access points can be grouped in territories and then locations within the territory. To create a new territory, click the plus sign and give the territory a name, such as USA. You can then add the people who can administer the wireless access points in this location. Then click the territory and type the name of a specific location, such as New York and Los Angeles. You now have two options to configure your access points. One. Export the AP configuration file and load it onto each access point so that they can communicate with the server and be configured remotely. Or two, configure the wireless settings on CWM first, setting parameters such as SSID, wireless password and bandwidth usage. This option is useful if you want to pre-configure the access points centrally and then ship them to a remote location, enabling instant wireless deployment. The former option is useful if you want to do configuration on site, allowing for the possibility to tweak the settings to achieve the best wireless signal for that location. In this example, I will set some of the key wireless parameters. Let's start by setting the SSID of the wireless signal. Select a location and then click on the plus sign next to the location to display the configuration options. D-Link's access points support up to eight different SSIDs or wireless signals. Each SSID is assigned to its own dedicated VLAN, allowing the wireless traffic to be segmented, enabling traffic to be isolated from people even though they are all connected to the same access point. As a rule, the primary SSID should be used for internal or private traffic. With D-Link Central Wi-Fi Manager, you can set different SSIDs for different wireless frequencies. I will set the SSID to CWM. You could set advanced features such as, should the SSID be set to broadcast to everyone, and what security encryption protocol should be used to protect the wireless data. Now let's create a guest network, so visitors must access the internet via a wireless network called CWM. And for the purposes of this guide, we want to set a generic username of guest and a password, which will be used by everybody. As you can see, we now have two SSIDs broadcasting on our wireless access point. Now let's put some restrictions in place to ensure that someone on our guest network doesn't consume all the wireless bandwidth. We can restrict the total bandwidth for the whole wireless network by setting the download and upload bandwidth or alternatively restrict the download and upload capacities for each access point and then further control this for each individual SSID. Upload and download capacities can be set in megabits per second or kilobits per second. Please note, you need to enter integer values only. If you enable the captive portal, then users will be prompted to enter the guest username and password to authenticate to gain access to the internet. Without enabling this option, no authentication will be conducted. If desired, you can enter a default web address where the user will be redirected to should they log in successfully. For a bit more customization, a bitmap can be loaded to personalize the look of your captive portal. You can view and optimize the radio frequency or RF used on the access points in this network by selecting the RF optimization option, selecting the auto initiation period, adjusting the RSSI threshold will adjust the strength of the signal being received by the antenna in the wireless device. Device setting allows extra refinement for your wireless network. You can view and configure the accessibility settings for access points in this network. Some advanced wireless settings can also be configured on this page for both the 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequency bands. One such option is band steering, which automatically moves newer 5 GHz devices off the 2.4 GHz frequency, giving them a stronger, more reliable wireless signal. Finally, push the settings to the access point by selecting the Uploading Configuration option. Any new changes can be pushed live in real time, or by selecting a date and time, allowing for minimum inconvenience to your wireless network. Similarly, firmware upgrades can be scheduled for immediate or automatic out-of-hours deployment, making AP management a simpler task.